Today we're going to be taking a look at two Asus graphics cards in the low end or entry level market. These being the RX 560 4GB versus the GTX 1050 Ti 4GB. So stay tuned for the benchmarks and my thoughts. So both of the cards that I have here today are of the Asus Strix variant, which is the highest end variant available to purchase from Asus. Now I chose to review these two cards specifically in order to keep as level of a playing field as possible. Now they both have four gigabytes of VRAM, they're both Strix OC variants and both are entry level market cards. Now, typically you'd see the RX 560 compete against something like the normal GTX 1050. But since the normal GTX 1050 doesn't have a 4GB desktop model available, I have to compare it against the 1050 Ti to keep things as level as possible since VRAM limitations can skew results. Now I might do a later comparison with a 2GB RX 560 and a normal GTX 1050, but that's not really on the cards right now. Furthermore, be noted that the 1050 Ti, if you're new to the graphics card market, currently has 20% more CUDA cores available to it compared to the regular 1050, which means that it's usually going to be around about 15 to 20% faster. So the 1050 Ti is actually more powerful than the regular 1050, and it's not just some weird name change or change for VRAM, it actually is a more powerful chip. Now with that out of the way, let's outline the differences between these Strix OC cards and we'll be able to get a better picture of them. So the Strix RX 560 is equipped with 4GB of GDDR5 memory. It's clocked at 1336MHz in OC mode. It has 1024 stream processors with a memory clock of 7000MHz, a 128-bit memory interface, a 6-pin power connector, 7.5cm fans, and it takes up two PCIe slots in your case and it costs currently $239 in Australia. Now the GTX 1050 Ti variant of the Strix is equipped with 4GB of GDDR5 memory as well. It has a max boost clock of 1506 MHz in OC mode, but it can go higher because of GPU boost 3.0. It has 768 CUDA cores with a memory clock of 7008 MHz, a 128-bit memory bus, and a six pin power connector, 9.5 centimeter fans, and it also takes up two PCIe slots in your case, and it currently costs 249 Australian dollars. Now, the biggest differences between these two cards physically is that Asus has provided a backplate for the 1050 Ti Strix variant, which is not present on the RX 560 model. In addition, the 1050 Ti card is much larger with a beefier heatsink and larger fans for much better cooling capacity. Now, both cards do have zero dB fan technology, however. So when your card isn't above 55 degrees Celsius, they don't spin. So that way they stay quiet or don't make any noise at all. Now, both cards do have some RGB in the form of a small RGB LED in the form of a Republic of Gamers logo, which can be changed through the Asus Aura software, but this logo was kind of small and didn't provide a lot of light. So if you have no lights in your case already for RGB, and if you have something like tinted glass, you're not gonna get a lot of RGB lighting out of that. And I would go for something either with, you know, additional lighting if you want more RGB in your case, or I'd look at something like a 1060 Strix or a 1070 Strix if you're really looking for that kind of light uh, coming from your graphics card. Now, before we get to the benchmarks, I wanna clear up some things. I was able to run the 1050 Ti at a max OC clock of 2000 megahertz, which then finally stabilized to around 1987 megahertz thanks to GPU Boost 3.0. So while I wasn't able to maintain that 2000 megahertz, 1987 megahertz on something like a 1050 Ti is pretty damn good. Now the RX 560 on the other hand wouldn't budge over 1385 megahertz without artifacting. So I had to keep it there. However, both cards were able to overclock past their manufactured uh, clock speeds. And uh, I was also able to max out the memory overclock on both of them uh, completely. The slider moved all the way to the right. 
without any diminishing results in performance. I checked that through superposition, I checked it through heaven, and I also checked it through fire strike. So that memory was indeed stable. So while the RX 560 wasn't actually able to overclock as good as the 1050 Ti, it was able to somewhat get a bit of a boost. Now, I will say the 1050 Ti, even though it did boost higher, it didn't really give it a huge boost. It gave it about a 10% boost. So yeah, it's, it's not really looking that good in terms of overclocking from these chips. Uh, I would expect that though, because they are budget cards and very rarely do budget cards overclock really well, but these ones did pretty decent. Anyway, let's get to what you guys came for, which is the benchmarks. And then after that, I'll give you guys my conclusion. So on to the conclusion, and this will be a bit of a long conclusion, but I want to be as succinct as I possibly can. For what it's worth, these are higher end models from Asus, and they have features that you won't find on lower end models from Asus or any other company. So if you're asking me, is it worth it to invest in a higher end model card over a lower end model card when it comes to the same entry level or budget graphics card? And I'd say if you're on a strict budget, then no, don't go for a high-end model because really the premiums that you're getting with these cards, I don't think are personally worth it. Uh, that's features like the RGB LED. Yeah, while it's there, it's a bit small and not very noticeable. And the backplate, well, it's only on the 1050 Ti. And, you know, if you're really worried about your card slumping or being broken, I mean, it's an entry-level graphics card. They're less than $250 they're not really that expensive. So if you need to replace it down the line or if it breaks or something like that, it's not that big of an issue. The higher end model has a six pin power connector, which if you don't have a power supply that can actually plug in to that six pin power connector, uh, you basically can't get any of the overclocking benefits out of the card. I'm not even sure if it'll run. And then you have things like, you know, dual fans, which just make it noisier, but the 1050 Ti and the RX 560 already run pretty quiet as it is and produce little heat. So it just really makes no sense to purchase a high end model of a budget card. And when things like price, which is usually the determining factor for people purchasing at this kind of price point is elevated, it just makes really no sense to pick these up. With that being said, there is a mining boom going on right now. So you can't really upgrade to a 1060 or a RX 570 without having to pay even higher in terms of uh, prices. So yeah, I think if you're looking at something and you wanna spend quite a bit of money and get that premium feel, but not spend a lot of money, then this is a decent alternative. So if you're looking for a higher model of a budget graphics card, then I can recommend these since they offer the most features out of the higher models that I've seen from any company. And that's because they have the RGB LED, the dual fans, the zero DB fan technology, and the backplate on the 1050 Ti. And I also kind of like the aesthetics that they've got going on with the Strix models. Now the question is, do I buy the GTX 1050 Ti or the RX 564 gigabyte when it comes to these Strix cards? The answer is based off the fact that the 1050 Ti cooled itself better, the fact that it was drawing less power, it has a backplate and it performs 28% better out of the box than the RX 560 Strix. 
I'm going to have to say pick up the 1050 Ti over the RX 560 model. Now, before you start writing your comment about how this isn't a fair comparison or, you know, that I'm putting AMD behind in NVIDIA, you have to keep in mind that in Australia, these cards are separated by a mere $10. And considering that the RX 560 Strix performs that 28% worse than the 1050 Ti Strix, and the 1050 Ti Strix only costs $10 more, which is 4% more than what the 560 Strix costs, it's just too hard to recommend the uh, 560 Strix. Uh, as for pricing, these are entry-level graphics cards, and you know they haven't really been hit hard by the mining boom as of late, so these prices are indeed market value in Australia. And because of that, I have to recommend the 1050 Ti. Now, on top of that, we also have the RX 560 even losing to the 1050 Ti in more beneficial circumstances where AMD hardware typically excels. Uh, so, for instance, look at the DX12 Rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark and the Doom Vulcan mode benchmark that I did. And you'll see that even though AMD got a gain, it just wasn't enough uh, compared to the 1050 Ti. So I can't really see any benefits of purchasing the RX 560 Strix over the 1050 Ti Strix, but I will say this, if you're looking for an RX 560 versus 1050 Ti, you know, if you can find any model, even if it's not a Strix one, from another company of an RX 560 four gigabyte, which is 30% cheaper than the 1050 Ti, then I think that that is a good deal because at the end of the day, price in this kind of category is really gonna make or break whether you pick a card. And you know, if the 560 is cheaper, then I say pick it because even though you're getting, you know, 28% more performance or 25, I think if it's 30% cheaper, then at that point you can actually look at the 560 and think, yeah, I'll pick this up because at the end of the day, you're going to have to upgrade these cards sooner or later and uh, picking up the cheapest one just seems like the best thing. Now, on top of it also being cheaper, the RX 560, if you were to find one, uh, just based off what I've seen with the Strix, it has better 1% and 0.1% lows compared to the NVIDIA hardware. So that means that you're going to get a lot less noticeable stuttering in games because your frame rate's not going to be dropping as harshly as it would on the NVIDIA hardware. But since the NVIDIA hardware does have better average frame rates, I have to recommend it in this case. So with all that being said, you know, this review is primarily about the Strix cards from Asus. And with these being the top of the line mo uh, models from Asus, the kind of performance that you're going to get out of these cards will be more of what you typically get out of other 1050 Ti and RX 560 cards. You know, you're going to get a little bit extra, not a lot, but you are going to get a little bit extra. And based off the stock benchmark results that I have and the temperature results and the power consumption results, as well as the better overclocking performance and some of the extra features like the backplate and larger fans, to me, if you want to pick up a high-end model of a budget graphics card, then the 1050 Ti Strix OC is the way to go, since it offers the best bang for buck out of this comparison, and I recommend it as the best, probably of all the high-end models that I've seen, entry-level cards in Australia. So if you want, go pick up one of these guys. It's a perfectly good card. It works absolutely great. And I gotta say, this time, Nvidia did get it right compared to uh, AMD, but I really think at the end of the day, if you're looking for something in the mid range, go for an AMD card because they're offering really good value, especially when that mining boom finishes, they're gonna drop like really harshly because they're gonna be so many on the used market and you'll be able to pick up pretty much any card and game at 1080p incredibly cheap. But if you're looking for something in the meantime, then these two cards are a good option. But if I had to pick one out of the two, it'd definitely be the 1050 Ti Strix.